So attending many conferences, publishing many journal papers, getting a lot of grants, you have a big group. What are the research areas that you are working on nowadays? Uh, nowadays, um, um, again, everything is about materials, but um, we are now more digging into the different aspects of smart materials for, uh, I call them smart materials for clearing the way towards sustainable gold. So that's a good. Yeah, because um, I think um, now with the already we have received the alarms from these uh, environmental changes we are observing, um, like in the North Pole, like the uh, climate change. So I think um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm focusing more on creating a nexus between all of these um, different technologies and uh, industries from energy, water, food, health. I think all of these are interconnected and the core are these materials, the smart materials that I call them. <laughs> smart materials. Okay. What is the smart materials? Oh, uh, there are different definitions there, but I will uh, say I consider two different categories. So one of the most famous one is those materials that they have they are sensitive to different stimuli. That could be temperature, moisture, um, it could be pressure or mechanical stresses. So they are responsive to these changes, to their environment. And based on these changes, you can uh, leverage some properties uh, mm -hmm. from these materials. Or um, I also consider multifunctional materials oh, as okay. smart materials. What are they, um, from my perspective, Multifunctional materials are, we have one single backbone of a certain material, say a certain polymer or certain ceramic. And we make this one consolidated backbone or matrix multifunctional no. that has different functionality, multi-purpose. Uh, so for instance, it can do the job of um, having high electrical conductivity, giving you um, some, uh, I don't know, self cleaning properties or um, different aspects according to the application. So I think they're very tunable and um, they're also, in my mind, could be sustainable because um, you, they, they, they can have different purposes at the same time. So okay. you're using less resources and creating less waste. Okay, so if we wanna maybe um, narrow down the comparison between the smart materials and the traditional materials in terms of the environmental impact and the sustainability. So what is the main differences between smart material and traditional material in terms of the environmental impact and sustainability? Well, the difference, I think smart materials are should have a crucial role to create those sustainable, towards a sustainable development of technologies. Okay. Because as I said, um, having, um, being responsive to the changes around you or having the capability of doing different functionality at the same time leads you to generate less waste and also preserve more resources. And they can have the potential to become biodegradable or recyclable. Uh, so as a whole, like um, if I want to summarize them, I think compared to traditional materials, you're using one, you are able, sometimes for these properties, you have to use multiple structures. Sometimes the compatibility problem between these is a huge issue. But removing that compatibility challenge and having everything in one consolidated structure, I think um, can help us more towards sustainability. Um, can you give us some specific examples of uh, application of smart materials about helping toward the SDG or sustainable development goals? Um, of course, uh, one of the very exciting things, I think one of my students is focused on that is um, smart coatings. Like um, uh, he, he's graduating soon in uh, summer, but um, his project was involved with having multiple properties in one layer of coating 
Um, these properties could be like self-healability. So that means uh, if you apply this coating on a surface and a crack happens or damage happens, the material itself can um, revive its structure. It heals itself. So that crack is removed. This could be um, based on the moisture in the environment on the temperature. Um, or self-cleaning properties, um, these, these are, I think all of these are important for different surfaces for vehicles and transportation for many industries. Self-cleaning, I think that that's really important because it helps to uh, use um, less amount of water or harsh right. agents, so less uh, water contamination and uh, prolong the lifetime of a surface. Um, so it can repel the dust, oil, and water at the same time. Um, and it can also have some decorative aspects. Another student, a PhD student, she's also graduating soon. She found a very nice um, sustainable and uh, bio-based materials that um, can re replace these toxic dyes and they can change colors. They're, um, they call them structural colors. So they are based on the different angles of the light. You can have a rainbow or a colorful uh, structure. I think these, these can have, um, in addition to the decorative uh, purposes, it I can have also other uh -huh. I think this project is more close to your heart because it brings you back to the architecture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe. Good point, good point. I, I never uh, looked like at that. it from that perspective. <laughs> but before we go to uh, that, okay. Um, how we prepare the smart material? Are they existing naturally or we are fabricating? There are some... Um, Yes. Some materials maybe in the nature that we can get uh, inspired from um, that, that they are sensitive to this stimuli, but for the preparation, they could be different. Um, there are different methodologies or strategies based on how to fabricate or what components uh, you use. For instance, one simple example is um, in we know all about polymers. And um, if we maintain some of, and polymers are made of oligomers and oligomers from monomers, uh, a little bit back to chemistry. Yes. So if we use uh, some of these, um, incorporate some of these monomers in the structure of the polymer, they're not, they didn't form these uh, multi chains, but they can form that. I'm talking about self healing yeah. example. Um, with some temperature change or forces or maybe even moisture that they are exposed to, um, they can form again those small polymer chains and maybe heal the crack, for instance. So these are, there are different strategies and, um, but, um, or different, we call them functional groups that we can yeah. embed into the structure. So they can provide those multifunctionality. Yeah. yeah. Let's let's say for the layman uh, person, say yeah, smart material, not a magic material. <laughs> so f for the smart material, there are always some challenges and limitation. What are the main challenges and limitation for the smart material that is maybe I would say slowing down their mm -hmm. application mm -hmm. on the industry? Very good question. Um, Definitely, again, from the perspective of a process engineer, uh, going back to my process engineering <laughs> field, um, I think um, the scalable fabrication, larger scale yeah. or uh, mass, um, larger scale uh, production of these materials, um, they're not still cost effective, again, because of some special ingredients we use or the new methodology to produce them, but that one is not still at the largest scale fabrication uh -huh. method. Um, so we need to do lots of optimization and to make sure the energy consumed is efficient, uh, no um, further waste is generated. I think these are the big challenges. Another could be still some of them, maybe performance wise, are not super reliable. So still lots of tuning and innovations should be along the way to tackle those. Um, but some of them, uh, are, I know like some uh, ventures or new startups like already started to do some job and no. force commercialization, okay. especially for uh, vehicles and transportation. Okay, because 
my background is uh, <clears throat> waste management or sludge management. So with that, mm-hmm. current emphasis on the climate change and we always look at the waste reduction and reducing the waste and even um, increasing the resource recovery efficiency. How do you see the role of smart material on that sector? Most of these materials, um, I mean, it depends on how you design them, but if from the beginning, like, um, and again, lots of them are inspired from the nature, so we can use the biomimic or bio-inspired ingredients. So they potentially possess the biodegradability or recyclability or compostability uh, features which really um, help us. Another aspect is because of their um, some um, self-tuning or self-healing properties, again, as one of the important features of these materials, or um, having um, multiple functionalities, it basically prolongs the lifetime, the usage, um, the life cycle that these materials can have. Um, so I think these are the important aspects uh, of smart materials in terms of waste, waste management. management yeah. Waste reduction, yeah. So, um, Dr. Darin, how do you envision the future of smart material on helping the SDG? That's what we say. Um, again, I think they play a crucial role. And as far as SDGs, because um, we always are seeking for new ways of um, creating a circular economy, uh, creating uh, um, how to manage or reuse our waste if it is being generated and um, how we can use our um, resources available to us, for instance, um, biomass or renewable resources. I think because of the features they can have, um, they can maybe revolutionize the emerging technologies and be used there. Um, And I believe, um, because again, all of these technologies stems from their ingredients. So if we can incorporate that. But I think one important thing that I can envision is uh, making sure I always believe we have to use our existing infrastructure because rebuilding everything, that would be, again, a new creation of new um, problems. So how we can make them compatible even with existing infrastructure, yeah.